Hi everyone, Jason Hoppy here to show you how to use gradients in Adobe Illustrator. But we're going to start off with our swatches panel and our gradient panel. So you can go into window, call up your gradient panel, call up your swatches panel. Now an interesting thing with Illustrator is when we start off with any of our objects to apply a gradient, there is no new gradient command. I can't go under my swatches panel and say, hey, I'd like to create a new gradient. The way gradient works uh, is that you actually have um, a few gradients in your swatches panel here, just some basic gradients. But we can create any gradient from scratch, and then we add that to our swatches panel for future use. I'm going to select my shape, and in my gradient panel, I'm going to make sure my fill is forward. And I can click on the gradient icon here and drop down for a few basic, simple gradients that are here in Illustrator by default. To edit one of these gradients is very simple. In our gradient panel, we have our gradient slider at the bottom, and then we have our color stops, these circles. Double click on either one of those circles, and you call up your sliders to change the color using your sliders, or you can click on your swatches icon to pull from any of your swatches in your swatches panel, or you can choose the eyedropper, which then allows you to sample any color in your document and add that color to your color stop. Double click on the other color stop, apply another color, and you end up with your gradient. Nice and simple. To add colors to the gradient, click anywhere under the gradient slider here to add a new color stop. Double click to change the color. Now these color stops can be moved all along the ramp here. And they can also run over each other, which means you can just flip one over. You don't have to like move it out of the way. You can just drag that over itself and move those and change the order. The diamonds that are above the gradient ramp are our location. And the location means that this blue and this green are going to blend together seamlessly. That diamond basically says that the location is 50% halfway in between here to give us a nice smooth transition. If you move that diamond one direction or another, what that's going to do is it's going to change how fast or how slow the colors blend together. A nice even blend is going to be at 50%, but sometimes you want to blend faster or slower, and you move that diamond back and forth. Add as many colors as you want to to this ramp here to get as many colors in the gradient. If you don't want any more colors in the gradient or you want to remove some, it's very simple. Click on the color under the slider and just simply drag down and snap that color off. And then you can move these colors all around. Now, if you want to have perfectly balanced colors on the ramp, you can select my first color, the blue here. Location is zero. Zero starts at the left. If I want this orange to be exactly in the middle, I'm going to go at 50%. And then this yellow is going to be at 100%. So now my colors are evenly distributed through the entire uh, ramp. Now, going over to my object and looking at this, you can see that I have the exact same little gradient ramp on my object. And this is what's called the gradient annotator. And if you don't see that, go under the view menu, down to gradient annotator. And this is going to be a quick little shortcut from the gradient panel. So everything that we did in the gradient panel here by double clicking, adding and moving these things and changing the order, you can do directly on the gradient annotator as well. We have three different types of gradients. A linear gradient, which we're seeing now. A radial gradient, which allows it to radiate out from any given point. And then a freeform gradient, which we're going to show you very shortly. With either the linear or the radial gradient, you can go under your fill and stroke here in the gradient panel, and you can reverse the direction of this gradient. So if I have a linear gradient, it just simply switches direction. I can change the angle of that linear gradient from the angle dropdown. If I have a radial gradient, I can change the angle, which isn't going to change anything because it's going to be radial, but I can change how flat it is. So if I change that to be a flat gradient here, it's more of an ellipse, then the angle is now going to show up. Okay, So if you have this set at 100%, the angle isn't going to make any difference at all. Now you'll notice with the gradient annotator, if I come over here and I move my cursor over this, what I'm going to do is I can take my content here and I can edit this. And I edit this by using my gradient tool. So if I go over to my gradient tool, which is the letter G, then my gradient annotator will show up on my object. All right. 
Now, if I'd like to adjust this directly on my object rather than going through my gradient panel to adjust the angle and the aspect ratio and the colors and the blends here, I can do this with the gradient annotator. So you select your gradient tool, select your object, and your gradient annotator shows up. The double dot on the left allows you to expand or contract that gradient. The solid dot on the top allows you to flatten your radial gradient. And the square on the right allows you to scale the size overall, as well as going in and changing your colors. If I go back to my linear gradient here, and my gradient tool is selected, and my annotator shows up, I can now go in and I can move this whatever direction I want to. I can go to the square and I can rotate this as well. Now, if you don't want the gradient annotator here, I'm going to go to the view menu and I'm going to turn off the gradient annotator. I can then go in with my gradient tool and I can simply click and drag and wherever I begin, that's where my gradient starts and where I drag to and let go of my mouse, that's where the gradient ends without having the gradient annotator show up. The gradient annotator is nice, but sometimes it can kind of get in the way. So I like to use the gradient tool with no gradient annotator and just simply click and pull and see where my gradient is going to work. Okay, so I can pull from any direction. You do not need to start inside your object. I can start way out here and I can pull a radial gradient if I just want a slight glow. It does not have to start inside the object. Pretty cool. Okay. Now, once you have your gradient created, you want to get this into your swatches panel so that you can use it again. Because this is what we're using right now in our fill, I can go to my swatches panel and I can grab my little fill icon from up on the upper left of the swatches panel and drag it down into a free space and drop it and there is my gradient in my swatches panel. I can also go to my gradient panel and grab this little icon and also drag it up in here as well. Either way is going to work and add it to my swatches panel. So that's a really simple um, overview of the linear and radial gradients. What makes this a little bit more fun is that we can also go in and adjust the opacity of the colors on the ramp. So if I were to select my orange here, and I were to select the opacity here of zero, you'll see that my yellow blends into the orange and then it also blends into total opacity. And what opacity does is it allows me to put this over another object. So my solid colors will be solid, but if I have an opacity on a color in the gradient here, that will allow it to show through. So that's kind of nice that you have that ability to do both solid and translucent or transparent colors on your gradient. Not a problem. Now, Fun part comes in with our third type of gradient here, our freeform gradient. Now our freeform gradient allows me to take an object and when I click on the freeform gradient, it allows me to go in and not do a linear or a radial gradient, which I could, but a freeform gradient allows me to go in and add colors in certain points. So if I click on my freeform gradient and I've kind of got this leaf here, I can click on any one of these existing points. And again, I can double click to call up my color palette and just click off, double click here, call up a darker green right there. And I can add any points on my object here, wherever I want to simply by clicking and then double clicking here to go ahead and give me a different look and feel on my object. And I can add as many as I want to here of any color whatsoever. So I can get kind of an interesting blend and I can move these around and change the order to create highlights and shadows and I can move them pretty much off the object edge here. Once that circle gets a little bit more than halfway, it's going to disappear, okay? That's one way that you can get rid of them. The other one is just simply click on them and then hit your delete key, all right? I'm gonna undo that, there we go. So move those off to the edge if you want to, just make sure they don't go too far off the edge. You can control how much influence these colors have by this little ring around here and I can control just how much blend these are going to have. Just think of this as a light bulb, kind of like on a dimmer, where you can kind of control how much color you're actually seeing being radiated out from these as well. Now, what's interesting with this is that I can put these colors anywhere inside or halfway over the edge of my object here. In the gradient panel, we are drawing with points, okay? Now, points are just like light radiating out kind of mixing with each other as you go. And they can kind of create some interesting effects here when you drag one point or one dot here or one little light bulb, as I like to call them, around start to influence the other kind of like light bulbs in here. 
Now, if you want a smoother transition between all of these, I can convert my points to lines. And what lines do is allow me to click on a point and then I can start to connect these lines together in a very smooth fashion. This is going to go in and it's going to create a much smoother blend with my objects here, okay? So if I take that and you click off them, in order to get back into editing this, you have to go back and click on the edit gradient in order to get into editing this. I can't just click off and click back on and get to that as well. Now, if I go back to points here, the interesting thing is once I convert this to lines here, those connectors, once I click on one and connect them all together, those connectors will always be there. So lines tend to give you a smoother blend between those points right there. And you can create all types of super cool gradients using the freeform gradient right here. Now, the third type of gradient here is a gradient stroke, okay? Now here's what's interesting. If I click and I bring my stroke forward here, and I'm going to apply a gradient to my stroke right here, click on the gradient, and I'm gonna apply just a very simple black and white gradient to my stroke. I'm gonna beef up this stroke right here so we can actually see. Now when we apply a gradient to a stroke here, now our stroke option comes up right here, and we have three different stroke types. We've got gradient within the stroke, along the stroke, and across the stroke. So what does that actually mean? Well, within the stroke, it actually acts like a shape. So if I have my linear gradient coming along here, you can see that it starts at light and goes to dark, basically as if it's a shape. So it's going and it's going right within the stroke. If I go along the stroke, it kind of acts like a road. Okay, So you can see here it starts at one point and goes around the circle and goes all the way around. The third one is across the stroke, and this can be really cool because this can give you kind of a glow around an object. So when I go ahead and I do this across the stroke, it's going to start in the center and then radiate out toward the edge. And if I reverse that, you can see how that works. Okay, so this could be really cool. All right, so we've got within the stroke, which is basically treating it like a shape, it just goes within it. We've got along it, like a road. And then we've got across the stroke, that gives us that shape. Now this could be really cool, okay? I wanna show you some really awesome uses of this. I'm gonna bump up the stroke weight really, really, really heavy here. And I'm gonna go into my stroke here and I'm going to do my stroke and it's going to, um, I'm gonna use it kind of like the road here where it's gonna go along the stroke. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add several different colors here. So instead of just going from white to black, I'm gonna move the black to the middle here, about 50%. I'm gonna add white over here. Again, I can double click on this and add white to it. And I can kind of create this mirrored effect, but I'm gonna go ahead and go a couple steps further. Now, instead of clicking underneath here and picking a new color stop and then picking the location here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to slide my shadow slider here I'm going to go to my white color stop here, and I'm going to duplicate this by holding down my Option or my Alt key. And then I'm going to click on the black slider, hold down Option or Alt, and duplicate that. Click on the white slider, hold down the Option or Alt key, and duplicate that, and do this. And now what I can get here is I can get this really cool kind of record look, which gives me highlights and shadows going across the stroke. And if I beef up this stroke here, beef up the stroke weight to be super thick so the stroke consumes the entire shape, this allows me to create this super awesome kind of record or this metallic button look. I mean, is that not cool? I thought so, okay? That is super awesome to be able to do something like this. And of course, you can always adjust the size of this as well. And then you'll have to go back in and adjust the size of the stroke as you go. But this is a super cool way to get that kind of stroke effect. Now, it looks like it's a circle filled with this, but the whole point is, is this is actually only along the stroke right here. So I can apply this, making it look like kind of a waffle, okay? So this is being applied within the stroke. This is being applied along the stroke. And this is being applied across the stroke. Check that out. I mean, that's just like mind boggling. A lot of people try to do this and they try to do all these special methods, but this is what a stroke gradient will give you. And it's like amazing, okay? 
Now, if I just want a basic gradient across a stroke here, I could have a stroked object, and I could apply just a very basic gradient on a stroke. So something like this. If I want to do a gradient across a stroke here with nothing special, I can, okay? But because I like these super cool effects, doing a stroke gradient within, along, or across gives you completely different ideas of how to go ahead and use this gradient. And these are the kind of things that when I show people, they're just like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. But, you know, what do you actually do with a gradient? How can you make something work? Well, okay, so I just showed you three super cool things that you can do with a stroke gradient. I want to show you what you can do with just a basic gradient. I'm going to create just a really basic button. and I'm going to draw this, and of course I'm going to do no stroke here. So I'm going to turn off my stroke. I'm going to turn off my fill. And I'm just going to apply a gradient fill here from my drop-down menu of, say, the fading sky. Okay? Actually... I'll do this one, this little orange thing. Quick little way to make a button. I'm going to take my object and apply just a simple gradient across it. I'm going to copy and paste this. I'm going to flip the rotation of that gradient, so it's going the exact opposite direction, reversing it. I'm going to make it smaller, and I'm going to land the two on top of each other. Boom. I've got myself a little button. Okay, that's pretty cool. And this is one of the simplest ways to do this. If you want to make a raised or a lowered button, you can simply put two gradients on top of each other, flip the gradient direction, turn that however you want to have it, and now you've got this super cool gradient. So not only can we do just very basic gradients with blending or opacity here on a shape, we can do our freeform gradient, which once you do that, make sure you hit that edit gradient to get back in here. We can do gradient strokes as well, which are going to allow you to do amazing things with it within, along, or across the strokes. And you can also do anything that you want to with just simple change of direction. So that's just a quick little overview of some of the cool things you can do with gradients in Illustrator. So I hope you enjoyed this. And check out my other videos here because I'm doing these every week and there's always cool stuff to watch.